Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're doing a little bit of Mythbusters because we're gonna find out if gaming on a MacBook is as bad as people say it is. And that screen just turned off. So you know what? That's a good sign it's so far. Good. Yeah, but uh, this is my M1 MacBook Pro with the M1 processor from Apple, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. And uh, yeah, it's a cool MacBook. I've been using it for a long time for my work and it's a machine I use more than my desktop at home sometimes, but I wanted to see how can this thing actually play games and is Mac OS really that bad for gaming? But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Team Group and their MP33 NVMe SSDs with capacities of up to two terabytes, support for up to 1,000 terabytes written for a very long lifespan, along with SLC caching for optimized performance and an included five-year warranty for peace of mind. Whether you're building a new gaming PC or looking for an affordable upgrade to your existing rig, you should definitely consider the MP33 NVMe SSD from our friends over at Team Group. Learn more by checking the link down below and big thanks again to Team Group for sponsoring today's video. So a couple of quick disclaimers. So number one, we're not Mac experts. You know, Matt's the only one who really uses a Mac. I've been on them numerous times, but I've never actually personally had one as a daily driver. So our knowledge is limited, so be nice to us in the comments. And secondly, this is a newer MacBook with an M1 chip. So it's not on the Intel chips like they used to be. So doing things like boot camp are almost impossible slash a lot harder now. So we have found some workarounds. Some of you in the comments that are diehard Mac fans might know a lot more about this stuff. We're just using what our limited knowledge has given us. So with that M1 chip, we're rocking an ARM processor. So going the traditional boot cam route of having a dual boot with Windows and Mac doesn't really work very well. So you have to use some crossover programs or basically additional compatibility layers for you to use that M1 chip in let's say Windows. Um, and also because it is an Intel based, you are doing some well emulation of Intel architecture with some supported games on Mac OS, but for Windows, Windows compatibility, actually use Windows to extend beyond that. We're using Parallels 18, which we'll talk more about when we get there, but let's just go over this MacBook a little bit more and talk about exactly how this gaming is gonna work. Feels like I'm at show and tell right now. So what we have right here is my M1 MacBook Pro 2020. Uh, picked this thing up about a year and a half ago now for I think it was like 1600 bucks. So you are paying a pretty pen penny for Macs. Um, this was like my first, actually no, it's my second like legit like high-end MacBook. I bought an old one on eBay for like 300 bucks to just dip my feet in a little bit to see if I really wanted one. I use an iPhone on the daily, so I got this. And I've been very happy with it overall. Now, the only downside, and I will say, is when you're getting a MacBook like this, is the port selection. So as you see right here, we only have these two Thunderbolt ports or USB-C ports, but you can get these little additional things that you can add, as you can see right here, headphone jack on the side. So you do have audio options right there, but you will need something like this if you are gonna get like a, well, keyboard and mouse or some sort of docking setup. But this thing just plugs in right there, allows you to charge and also add micro SD card and other reader options. And you get HDMI out. So if you want to go to a monitor, you could do that as well. And these things are like, I think like 30 or 40 bucks. And it's almost essential, honestly, if you're going to do anything other than just basic work using the trackpad. But the thing that we're going to be doing here with this MacBook is we're going to be doing a lot of native gaming using the M1 chip. There are some games in Steam, which I could probably go ahead and pull up. Let's see. Okay, so as you see right here, when you install Steam on a Mac, it will automatically default fault to this little Apple logo right here to show the games that are actually compatible. But the thing is, not all these games are compatible with M1 chips. So a lot of them will actually run um, on like older Intel MacBooks. But when it comes to this M1 architecture or the M1 series in general, it's totally different on how things work. I was able to install a couple of games that actually worked. I tested this before I brought it in today. We have uh, Balloons, which is uh, needs an update, obviously. Balloons is an easy game, no problem there. CSGO, Hollow Knight, and Stardew Valley. So really you're just gonna get like one shooter game basically, CSGO. I wanted to do Fortnite, cause Fortnite obviously, but there's like a feud going on with Fortnite and Apple right now. It's banned from the app store and it just doesn't get updates on Mac. So yeah, you can download it. I actually downloaded the whole 90 gig version of Fortnite and then it just launches and you just can't do anything with it. So <laughs> kind of weird there, can't do anything with Fortnite, but we have CSGO, we'll show you how that works. And what we're going to do then is after we're done showing you guys how stuff works natively on Mac, we're going to switch over to Parallels, which this is really cool guys. We have a different window open where we could just go, oh my goodness, we're in Windows. Was that was that Whoa. just magic or what? So we can go back and forth between Mac OS and Windows. And Parallels is basically like a VM. Don't quote me on that. It's it's basically a compatibility layer uh, VM that allow you to run Windows within the M1 Mac uh, ecosystem. And it's still limited though. There is literally a compatibility list, which I think I still have pulled up right here. There's literally a game compatibility list of games that'll actually work. And some of them, they mark as playable or runs. 
Um, Apex Legend was one I wanted to install because Jackson likes to benchmark it a lot. But if you go all the way up here, if you go right here, it is marked as playable, but when you actually click on it, it says it's unplayable on crossover, which is a compatibility layer option we could have went with. But in terms of virtualization using parallels, it's only playable, but you can't play online because of the anti-cheat. So it's really cool that there is a list of 400 games that you can go out of your way to see if they actually work. But again, it is way more complicated than just buying a Windows laptop. All of this is just for those who really want a MacBook for the reason you want a MacBook, the ability to sync up with your phone, your Apple Watch, have that whole ecosystem that people brag on about, but be able to do some gaming on the side. But we will be playing some games that are supported in the Parallels virtualization like suite that we have right here. And those games will be Halo, Killing Floor 2, and Left 4 Dead 2. Killing Floor 2 is labeled as perfectly playable. Left 4 Dead 2 is labeled as playable. I never really clicked on what the problem was, so we'll figure that out ourselves. And a bunch of the Halo games were marked as playable as well, so we'll try that. But let's just go ahead and play some native gaming and see how that goes. All right, guys, we're playing some CSGO, and I'll pull up the graphics here. I, I, I first <laughs> got to kill this guy, though. Watch this, guys. Watch this. Oh, 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 oh he got Let's him. Go. He got GG him good. easy. But in terms of graphics, we did definitely lower them a little bit because you got to remember, this is running a fairly high resolution. So we lowered it down to 1400 by 900 to kind of give it a little bit of a break because otherwise it would be at 2560. <laughs> so we'd be basically at, at half of 4K, which is definitely no bueno on something like this. And then for advanced video, we're pretty much on like high settings, but you could definitely lower them. Um, a good amount and that'd probably help, but hey, this is CSGO. We're not gonna lower settings mid game because you know what happens. Get I have breaks. noticed there are a lot of like optimization issues to where like lowering settings doesn't necessarily give you that much more performance when I at least was messing around with it. CSGO seems to be selling out a little bit better though, getting at least 60 FPS, but there are like drops here and there. Oh, oh you I've just got ought. hit. Oh, I, dude, I got the, the cheater up. Get on that auto. <laughs> And one thing to mention too is we are running off battery. When you are using like a gaming laptop normally, you can max everything to high performance mode and you would, well, get uh, the most performance you can and the battery will drain. But uh, not necessarily with max, like plugging in really won't give you any more power. Ooh, that was a Dude, good that one. That was a nice. I'm bringing back the Deeg. Bring back the, the one Deeg. Yeah, no, I mean, you know what's weird is it feels like, um, we've seen this happen in systems before where like it starts off bad, but it gets better. It's almost like it has to like load. It's progressing. There you go. This, is, this was Jackson's go-to when he first started CS. This, this is the off. only gun that I knew. The only thing that's like weird me out, and I don't know if maybe I'm putting my hand above the trackpad, I keep getting like random spots where like the mouse doesn't want to work right. It might not have good palm rejection where like you're like hitting the trackpad. Yeah. Yeah. There we go, yeah. three oh, in a row. Oh, that was beautiful. I don't know if you saw the other one, but I did uh, get three in a row. So I, saw I, I can quit now. Yeah. Sluggy. But yeah, CSGO, it runs. It's not like I wouldn't play competitive and try to get to a global elite on this, but you have it somewhat working. Let's try some of the other indie games that make a lot of sense on Mac. All right, guys, so an indie game that obviously will run just fine on this is Hollow Knight. Now, one thing to mention is we'll show like this indie game and then we'll also show, I'm just getting destroyed already. I'm not used to playing on a keyboard. That's one thing too, is controllers don't just like actually just work. Um, just like in Windows, you know, you, you kind of just expect a Microsoft controller just to work. But again, we're on an Apple device, so you got to keep that in mind. So I'm using keyboard here, but um, you can play these games, these indie games, no problem. And we're at the native resolution and getting 60 FPS. Um, it is a pretty low end game in terms of how hard it is to run. Uh, but it is cool that you can play a game like this where you just are kind of just dungeon crawling, leveling up and finding things and returning to the surface and doing it all over again. Yeah, one thing to mention too, and it's not gonna be like crazy cool games. Um, when you have the M1 Mac, you can also load apps from the App Store that would normally run on like an iPhone. Um, so you can play those games as well. And also there is the Apple Arcade, which is in the same category, which will have some other games that you can install and you pay like a monthly fee for as well, considering, you know, Apple monetize absolutely everything. Um, but there is an Apple Arcade where you can get games from. So there are gaming options with stuff like this, but at, at, with you guys watching this video, you're probably thinking the more traditional gaming like Fortnite Warzone and stuff, which we're trying to do. It's just, there is limited uh, functionality that you can actually do, especially with the M1. It makes it a lot harder even compared to the Intel chips. Hey, we did it, woo! But yeah, games like this, no problem whatsoever. I'll show you all another example real quick. I don't really wanna to dive too much in the gameplay. Games like Stardew Valley run great, so we'll just show you how that works real quick. Now the last game we're showing real quick on M1 is a game like Stardew Valley. Again, you're kinda of talking like mobile game territory where it's super easy to run and you can clean up 
your farm much better than mine is. It's, it's kind of a mess right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the capabilities of this are pretty solid. Again, if you're looking to get a good gaming laptop, you don't want to buy a MacBook for that. It's not intended for that. Um, there are the new M1 Pro chips that will actually give you a better GPU performance. So even in parallels or natively, you'll get better performance. Um, so you could go that route if you wanted to. But again, I, I really do preach that Apple just doesn't care too much about gaming, so they really don't do much optimizations for it. They use their laptops for work, and that's pretty much it, and just general usability, not gaming. So if there was a day that Apple decided to focus more on gaming again, it would be pretty cool, but at this moment, this is really what you get. But with some trickery and parallels, Parallels 18 is what we're using, by the way, for those watching in the future, we can actually load some games that are supported, as we mentioned in the beginning. And what we're going to do is try a game called Killing Floor 2, which is a very popular title. Well, not really that popular anymore. It was a game that we really liked years ago and actually has good playability, apparently. Um, I did launch it once last night before we did this video today, and it worked, but it was a little laggy, a little bit of stutter here and there, similar to how CSGO was, but let's go ahead and switch over to Parallels. All right, guys, we're in Parallels now, running Killing Floor 2. It's been out for a little bit now. I think it's been, uh, this makes me feel old. What has it been, like, probably seven years, maybe? Something like that. No. But... Yeah, it's not running bad. I'm curious if this is going to do a CSGO thing. Like it's very it similar. So, like, there's a lot of random stutters. It might get better as the game goes on. Yeah, guys, this this was a uh, this was a Toasty Bros classic. Before Toasty Bros or Toasty Bros, Killing Floor 1, Killing Floor 2. You know what? Let us know in the comment section down below. What's your classic go-to game? What's your classic? What'd you play back in the day? Oh, man. Oh, you're... Punch. Punch. He's in a bad... Cool, but I can do this, though. These guys can't even catch me. Oh, you can't zoom in when you're in the air? See, now I'm, this is starting to feel like some COD zombies. I'm going to run a train in here. Ooh, and then train in this him. game? No, oh, it's this guy. It's, it's Hans, Hans Volter. Hans. Hans Volter. Where you at, Hans? I hear him. Oh, I can turn it on. Ooh! Oh, I can. Yeah. Yeah, don't you feel dumb. Oh, no. Oh, oh no, he oh. grabbeth you. Bash, bash. Wow. No. Hey. Easy, easy, Hans. GG. All right, now here's what you have to do, guys. Whenever you win this, you gotta start throwing your dosh. See, that was Killing Floor, very playable. Slight lag spikes here and there, but I'm honestly pretty sure that happens no matter what. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Wow. Let's try another one. Well, you know what? Look at this. So it says Halo Reach, Halo 3, and all those other games are supported, but as far as I know, the only way you can play those on PC is through the Master Chief Collection, and it says it's not supported, ARM 64. So. That's an example of what doesn't work, and I think just because we showed you a lot of Killing Floor and stuff like that, and you can see on here, the list is extensive in terms of game support. Um, there are some that'll work and some that won't, but in recap, I think this is a pretty successful showcase of what a Mac can do, especially an M1 Mac in gaming, and I think it's more than usable for something on the side. I wouldn't, again, buy a Mac primarily for gaming, but the fact that it can do so is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. All right guys, so gaming on a MacBook went probably about how you thought it would. It, some of the games worked well, some just didn't work at all. They've done a really good job with the M1 chip being able to play games and having the integrated graphics that it does, but obviously with it being a MacBook, it has its limitations. A lot of companies just don't even want to put their game on it, so that is one of the main drawbacks. I will say, if you really want to be a part of the Mac universe, I mean, it's not always a bad idea just to get a secondary laptop or PC or console to run the games you want. Or if you're gonna buy a Mac, make sure it'll play the game that you want before you buy it, because if it will, then who cares? Just go ahead and get it. So yeah, if you want to take a look at some M1 MacBook Pros, you can check the link down below, probably an affiliate link and will help us out. Let us know if there's any other Mac content you want to see here on the channel. Again, this is something we're totally new at. I literally just use this for emails and occasional video editing on the side, so I don't really know the ins and out of it just yet, but if there's anything Mac related you'd like to see on the channel, let us know down below. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next one. Goodbye. Now at PC Bros, we can definitely hook you up with an actual PC that has Windows so you can play any game you want. And hey, if you really do want a Mac, we do typically have Macs in store as well. PC Bros. Tags, where we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and some Macs. So last time I checked, we had an all-in-one Mac up there. If you come in store, you can pick it up. If you use code TOASTYBROS200 to check out, you can save 2% of your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye.